Welcome again to the complete free Flutter course presented by yours truly, Ovidus Mazurum. In this video, module three, second lesson, we're going to continue what we were speaking about last time. We created a new project in the last video and went over the default starting project, but now we're going to turn it into the real Hello World app, the one that is essential for all programmers. As I said last time, it's kind of um, kind of a trend. <laughs> If we didn't make a Hello World app, we just wouldn't be real programmers. This would be like being one index rather than being zero of index. That's how you can tell somebody's not a real programmer. The file we're looking at right now is the starting project main.dart file with everything deleted from it. So if I were to open up the Explorer, you can see I'm within the Hello World uh, folder from last time inside lib and main.dart. Uh, if you don't remember from last time, main.dart is the starting point for our app. And if you didn't follow along last time, I'll just quickly open up the terminal. So to get to this point, all you have to do is type in flutter create, and then the name of the project, which in this case is Hello World, and hit enter and it will do it for you. Uh, I'm not gonna do it this time because I did so last time. Additionally, I do have my emulator running already, uh, ready to do what we need to do. So as you can see, I have already deleted everything so that we can start from scratch to get a better understanding of what's going on. So the first thing we're going to need to do, just like any other Dart, program is start with our void main. So Flutter is no exception, Dart must always have a main function. And here's the part where we're gonna start the actual Flutter code. One of the functions that Dart gives us is run app. And you can see that when I type it out, VS Code is smart enough to give me this ability to auto import from and I can't see where it is, but let's just click on this. And it's given me Cupertino. I do not know why Cupertino is the default because I, I don't use it. I think most of us don't. Uh, so I'm going to change this to material dot dot. And of course I need my semicolon at the end. I'm also gonna get rid of this so I have more screen real estate. Run up takes a single positional argument called app, which is of type widget. And if we quickly read the description, we won't read the entire the entirety of it. The first line says that it inflates the given widget and attach it to the screen, which is very interesting. Uh, essentially what this means is that, and I'm not gonna go too much into the theory of how Flutter works behind the scenes yet, but when I give a widget or a widget tree to run app, that widget is like a blueprint. It isn't the screen itself. It's not everything that is painted to the screen. It's just a blueprint. And run app is going to turn that blueprint into what the user can see. Uh, it's going to build it, if you will. And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on why and how that happens, but uh, we will in the future need to understand it a bit better. So putting that aside, since I want it to be called my app, I'm going to say class my app and I'm going to extend stateless widget. In Flutter, we have two different types of widget. So there's abstract class stateless widget, extends widget, and we also have state full widgets. Again, this isn't a heavy theory video, so I'm not gonna go into the difference between the, the two, but for this one, we'll use stateless widget. And you can see we have a red line because we're missing a concrete implementation of stateless widget.build. So let's just control click and create one missing override. We'll get rid of this. The build method is going to do what you expect. It describes the parts of the user interface represented by this widget. That doesn't make the most sense, <laughs> but essentially it will actually build it. So when we call run app my app, this is going to call the build function and turn whatever we have here into what can be seen on the screen. So we can return and you can see it returns a widget. 
So we need some kind of widget here. And let's try just returning a text widget. And a text widget, as you can probably infer, is a widget which contains text. And this requires a string as its first parameter. So we're going to use the essential hello world. Then we're going to save our file, open up that terminal. And I'm actually in the wrong folder. I should be in hello world. And once I'm there, I'm going to hit flutter run to compile my code and see what I can see on the screen. When I try to do this, I am going to get an error because I forgot to actually instantiate it. So widgets are classes and the same way we had to do something like shape, shape equals new shape with the open and close bracket to create a new, uh, to actually instantiate it. We also have to do that here. And by the way, if anybody is curious, this is the same as basically saying my app app equals my app and then here saying app but we don't normally do this because i'm not going to use this variable anywhere else i'm just going to use it here so a shortcut is to just instantiate it directly within the uh, function and you know that's perfectly fine okay so now that i have this i'm going to run this again so flutter run it took about one, two minutes to start. Um, it can take a while to compile your program the first time. Luckily, it's not always going to be this way. Once you have it compiled the first time, if you make any small changes, Flutter supports what's called hot reloading. So once, once you actually have it compiled the first time, it's very easy to just update it with what you need. But you can see that we have an error, no directionality widget found. I was expecting this. I'm not going to go too much into why this is, but I am going to need to give it a text direction. And text direction here is going to text, take a text direction. And you can see VS Code gives me a few suggestions. Dot LTR, that's left to right or right to left. I'll just select this one, save it, and run it again. And you can see that this time, by doing the perform hot reload, it only took 335 milliseconds. And to do that, all I had to do was go to where my terminal is, and you can have the lowercase r for a hot reload, uppercase r for a hot restart. And if we go to our emulator, we can see what's happening. If we look very carefully, <laughs> we can see that it does say hello world over here on the top, obviously not what we wanted, but it is doing what we want it to do, and there are no more errors. So obviously I don't want it to be displayed here. So what I'm gonna do is click on, and in fact, I'm gonna make this smaller. So I just quickly resized my VS code so that we can see the emulator at the same time as the code I'm writing. So what I'm gonna do here to reposition this hello world text is click on text, hit control dots, and then I'm gonna hit wrap with widget. And what this is going to do is, well, wrap it with a widget. And now I can change this to a center widget. I'm just gonna put an extra comma here and then hit Control Shift I, which is going to format everything nicely for me. Then I'm gonna hit Control S to save it back in my terminal and Either lowercase or uppercase R will work fine. That's going to reload everything for me and I can see hello world has been moved to the center. So the center widget does basically what you would expect. It's going to center whatever child it has, whatever is inside of the center widget, both vertically and horizontally. Doing so, of course, has made this more like what we want it to look like, but our app is still missing some essential pieces. Uh, although you can see it does work this way, a regular app wouldn't just use run app followed by a center or a text widget. Normally we would have a material app or a Cupertino app instead. So what we're going to do here is I'll again control dot when I'm on center, wrap with widget, and then from this widget, I'm going to change it, change it to say material app. 
and instead of child here, because material app does not have a child, I'm going to say home. And don't worry too much about what this means. We'll go into more details in the future. And again, hit the lowercase r or the uppercase r to reload it. We can see what's been updated on the emulator and it looks like I made it worse, not better. The default text for the material app is big, red, underlined. It does not look good at all. On the bright side, it's still centered. So there is a bright side to this as well. But yeah, this isn't what we want exactly. Uh, the reason it's doing this is because we should be wrapping our widget in some kind of scaffold, something to give it a layout. So while this does work, you know, it's not great. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is again, click on my center, control dot. That's going to bring this up. I'm going to wrap it with a widget. And this time I'm going to use scaffold. You can see scaffold also doesn't take a child. That's why it's underlined. So instead I'm going to switch it to body. And again, don't worry too much if you don't know that this is home, this is body, and this is child. These kind of things will become second nature to you after doing this for a while. But for now, just kind of treat it like, you know, a magic word. It needs to be done this way. But yeah, in the future, you'll definitely understand why. So again, we're going to refresh this. And there we go. Now it's looking a bit better. Um, the scaffold essentially is giving us some kind of layout. Uh, our app really should have a layout. And although it doesn't look so great now, it is going to help us in the long run. And personally, I think this looks kind of ugly. One of the things I can do now is because I have my material app, my material app is actually giving my widgets inside a position. So I don't need this text direction anymore. I can get rid of this and I can refresh it and you can see there has been no change. And now that I have this, I also think that this text is really ugly. So if I hover over text, you can see, so all of these inside the curly braces means all of these uh, parameters are optional. I don't need them, but I can add them. And you can see there's a text style widget I can give it. So the parameter name is style. So let's try that. I'll have style and style takes a text style widget. So I'll put text style and yeah, there should be a comma, not a semicolon because all of this, uh, these are all parameters for text and text of course is a widget, which is a class. So we're essentially making a new class here of type text and with these arguments. So within textile, if we look here, we can see all the things it takes and that's a lot. <laughs> We're not going to go over all of them now, uh, but we can see, for example, it takes the color and color is of type color. So I can have color and notice again, VS code nicely gives me some suggestions uh, from this, from that, that's all fine. But what I'm going to do instead is if I scroll down, I can see these. And I actually know what they are, of course. So I'm going to use colors dots. And let's say I use blue gray, save it. And I'm also going to give it another parameter. So comma and one more. And what I'm going to do here is give it a font size. So I'll say font size and font size takes a double. So that's a number. And let's just say 24.0. Sounds good. Control shift I to format it, save it and refresh again. So yeah, it looks a bit better. It's a bit bigger. It's a different color. But let's say I want it a bit darker. If I hover over blue gray, you can see VS code nicely gives me all of this. If I have blue gray, this is the default. And then notice I have lighter colors and it's not loading all of them. Now it is. It also has the darker colors and it also gives me the other colors, gray, cayenne, blue, and so on. Uh, but I do want the blue gray. I just want it to be darker. So I could say blue gray 900. 
exactly like they had on my suggestion. There, save it, run it again. Yeah, you can see it got darker. I think it looks a lot better. And I also don't really like this white. I think it's a bit boring. And because this is title, let's make it bigger. Yeah, it looks better. Uh, the background. So I did see my textile had a background here. Hmm, I also had a background color here. So we could try that, for example. Background color. And let's give it a colors dot. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not very creative. Oh, what do they give me? Uh, let's say blue. Why not? Save it. Hmm, that's not quite what I wanted. So it gave me a background color just on the text, but I wanted it to be on the entire screen. We're going to go into more details into why that is in the future. But for now, what we're going to do is delete this from the text style. And instead, we'll go into our scaffold. So our scaffold is what gave us the layout for all of this. Hovering over scaffold again. Wow, there's a lot. <laughs> but we can see we have background color here. So I'm going to say background color, colors.blue, save it, refresh it. So yeah, it did what I wanted it to do. It's uh, now it's given me a background color on the entire page. And I am also going to make this a bit lighter. In fact, why don't I just look here? Let's use a blue 50. I wanted to have a little bit of a color, but not too much. Save it, reload. Yeah, I think it looks better. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not perfect, but there we go. This is a complete Hello World app. It does exactly what we wanted it to do, which is say hello. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look abysmal. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we'll go into more details into some of the other widgets and why it does some of the things it does. If you did like this video, make sure you give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And for myself, Ovidius, I'm out.